What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back for the first predicted lineup of the season. Obviously, we face a Brentford away, two o'clock kickoff, and first sighting of Ange Ball in a competitive game. No Harry Kane, obviously, he is currently, as of recording, just about to board or just boarded the flight to Munich. But enough of Harry Kane now. Let's move on into the new season and let's see what lineup we have predicted for the first game. And in terms of injuries, Ange has taken his press conference. And what are the injuries? Yeah, I actually, I'm not sure if he actually mentioned injury news for the press conference. He did. But, he did. Um, but. He he gone. said that um, he said that there's basically no fresh injury concerns and all the long-term injuries are still injuries. There's a few niggles, but not everyone that's been available for the last game is available for today, for so Sunday. The injuries you can see on screen, Ben Tenko, Cessillon, Hill, Forster and Ndombele all uh, pretty much out. Well, Ndombele technically available, but I don't think he's going to be selected. But in terms of the other four, they're definitely injured. But apart from that, um, we still got a lot of players to select from because of the, how big the squad is. So um, a lot of uh, players available. All right, well, let's get into it. We know we're going to play a 4-3-3 formation in goal. It's going to be Vicario. I mean, he hasn't filled me with too much confidence in pre-season, but hopefully now we're in competitive football, uh, we can really see what he's about. Yeah, and I think it's a really tough game for actually for him to get his um, awakening to the Premier League because Brentford are a team that are really... Um, um, they really focus on set pieces and I think he's going to be very very busy in this game and especially um, when they attack in transitions people like Mbwemo he's going to have to make a few saves I reckon to make sure that if Tottenham are to get the win we're not conceding too many goals so I think it's going to be a difficult first day but it's going to be a, hopefully a good welcome to the Premier League for Vicario Let's hope so man let's really hope so but let's move on to the defensive line and on the right hand side we are going to go for Emerson Royale who you know for the defensive solidity I'm really happy um, he's going to be playing I mean Ange did mention I mean I don't know if Ange I think Paul O'Keefe mentioned it actually that Pedro Porro is going to be a cover for Emerson and for Kulisevsky on that right-hand side. So we do envisage Emerson to play. Yeah, we think Emerson starting the season. I think he did. I think he has found this inverted role a bit more comfortable so far yeah. um, than Porro um, in the preseason. Uh, I think Porro actually is a better footballer, but I think the way Emerson plays at fullback, he keeps things simple, allows the full players to flourish a bit more rather than overcomplicating things. And I think that's going to be important, especially in a game like this, where we need that defensive solidity to make sure we're not getting caught on the counter-attack too often. And when we do have the ball, I think he'll really help just maintain possession and um, hopefully allow the likes of Madison and Kulisevsky to really run riot. Yeah, absolutely. And he's a player who I, I feel like he's quite central figure within the squad in terms of the friendship groups. He always seems to be um, you know, uh, in and around everyone and cracking jokes and all the these kind of things and I feel like since he's come to Spurs he's been growing and growing and growing as a player and in stature of the squad and I really believe in Emerson's attributes and I think he can provide something for us really positive this season in terms of the centre backs in the first hand on the right hand side we're going to go for Kuti Romero obviously yeah and I think he's going to have a really important role because with the way Brentford are going to try and attack us, it's going to be very quick and direct attacks. And uh, I actually think Romero is a really good tonic to that because he's so aggressive. He likes to get on the front foot. The only problem is if he ever does miss time a challenge or he gets one wrong, they're going to be in on goal and it's going to be a big worry. But I think Romero's task is going to be going to be basically to stop the attacks at source. And that's what he's quite good at. Yeah. And, you know, in, in the past few seasons, we have had Eric Dyer there. Whatever you want to say about Eric Dyer, he's, um, he's been a bit of a leader figure at that back and with Van der Ven coming in you do expect them to to be um, our first choice moving on into the season so you do expect Romero maybe to ha to be more of that leadership role that experiential uh, character in the back four especially as the back four is so young. Yeah, and having won a World Cup, hopefully he'll he'll that'll give him confidence to take up that role. Yeah, absolutely. But for the left-hand side of the defence, we're not going for Van der Ven this time. We are going for Ben Davis. Yeah, the the, the reason behind this is because I really believe that um, it, the way Ange wants to play is. I'm not saying he's going to completely abandon the defensive side of the game, but I think he first and foremost wants to be good on the ball. He wants a good, he wants good passes out the back, and he wants to make sure that when we're dominating possession, we can really 
cause problems for the opposition. And I think the best way to do that right now, if Van der Ven isn't fit, is to have Ben Davis um, at centre back. Sanchez uh, still could potentially be on his way out, so I don't expect him to play. You got Eric Dyer there, but him up against Mbwemo on the left hand side is a recipe for disaster. So I think the best choice for now, if though if if you're not going to pick those two, is is Ben Davis. And I think if, if from a playing out the back standpoint. I think he's probably the one who's going to be best equipped to dealing with how Brentford press. Yeah, I get your point, to be honest, but I'm, I'm not 100% convinced on this one. I got a feeling that we might, in the early stages, uh, prioritise defensive solidity, uh, to be honest. And I think that's a big reason why Emerson might be starting the season as well. And with Ben Davis there, I just question um, about the defenders that we have, that he's um, capable of playing that high line, especially in a back four. I, pr I profess... I if Van der Ven's definitely not playing, I would prefer to see Davidson Sanchez there, to be honest, just for his physicality and his pace. But I can definitely take your point on Ben Davis. And out of the three, Davis, Dyer, and Davidson Sanchez, he is most equipped on the ball if we are going to prioritise that in the early stages. But look, it's going to be an interesting one. I Obviously, we all prefer to see Van der Ven there. Uh, but Ange did mention that he might not be up to scratch just yet. But even so, I would still shove him in the deep end, to be honest. I actually uh, disagree. I don't think we're going to prioritise defensive solidity in the early I know it's going to be difficult but I think Ange is going to want to instil that philosophy as quickly as possible and the only way to do that is to get the team trying to dominate and trying to play his way from the off and it's going to take some bad results to get there and I think he's willing to go through that Yeah, that's fair enough but I mean Ben Davis doesn't really Add that. I mean, he's okay on the ball, but he's not as like a great player on the ball. And I don't think you're losing that much uh, with Davis or Sanchez or, or Eric Dyer there. And I, me personally, I don't know how Ange is thinking, but me personally, I think I would prefer someone that's more equipped to play a high line um, than someone who's slightly better on the ball. Um, let's move on to the last of the back four on the left. We're going to go for Destiny Doggy, who's been really impressive in pre-season. It's going to be his Premier League debut, and I, for one, cannot wait to see him play. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see what he's going to do in the Premier League. Obviously, his pre-season performances have been really, really electric. He's been getting up and down that left-hand side, causing problems for fullbacks. And as well, when he's playing in that inverted role, um, coming into midfield, he's also doing a really good job there. Brian Mbwemo is going to be a, a massive threat on down that side. And so he's got to be careful when he does bomb forward that um, we're not getting caught out in position because he's the danger man for Brentford. If he gets a free run on that left-hand side, a bit like how Rafinha in the early exchanges for Barcelona got free on that side, we can't allow that to happen too often. So we've got to be careful. But I'm really hoping that Mbwemo is more worried about a doggy than a doggy is from look, look, there's no two ways about it. It's a big test for a doggy on his first game up against uh, Brian Mbwemo, to be honest. And um, I think he's got the physicality 100% to, to stand up to, to the task but you know sometimes there is a bedding in period in the Premier League and I hope it's not going to be like a welcome to the Premier League like Pedro Porro got but the dog is well more equipped in my opinion than Pedro Porro was coming into the Premier League. Moving on to the midfield the first midfielder we're going to talk about is on the right hand side is Pape Matasar. Yeah and we're thinking he's going to get the nod obviously Ange has been singing his praises during preseason. I think he's had some really impressive displays in preseason as well. And he obviously, I don't think uh, Ange is going to have too much um, reservations when it comes to him adding that physicality that we need in midfield and, and go going box to box. And he was um, he wasn't left at home, but he didn't start the game against Barcelona. And I I think I've I think he's going to get the nod here, uh, Pamata. And I'm excited to see him in a midfield three for the first time in the Premier League. Yeah, I'm also excited to be honest. He's a player that I really believe in his talents. I think that we all saw. I think we all started to really believe in Pape, Pape Matasar after that performance in the San Siro and if he can replicate that and, and really bring that on um, time and time again with that you know he played well beyond his years to be honest in that game and if we can see him take that kind of authority on the pitch on a consistent basis I think he's going to be a really important player for Ange Postacoglu this year in terms of the number six we are going to go for Yves Bissouma and I think um, I can speak for everyone here but we've all got high hopes for Yves Bissouma this season yeah I'm really excited to see what he can do against his Brentford team because Brentford have a very physical midfield and it's going to be incumbent on Basuma to make sure he takes charge when Brentford 
are pressing him and trying to ha ha harry and harass him and win the ball off him i need to see that confidence from him that i saw in barcelona on tuesday the ability to ride challenges to um play on the half turn swivel in between players i want to see that confidence because if he can do that against his brentford midfield it's really going to help open up space and, al and allow the attacking players to find different avenues to attack brentford so i think he's got a really crucial role here basuma and judging by pre-season i really i do think he's up to it i'm super excited to really get <laughs> this Basuma up and running in the Premier League and another player who we're really excited to see will be most likely our new number 10 it hasn't been uh, announced yet but we do envisage James Madison will be taking Harry Kane's number 10 um, heavy weight on his shoulders having that shirt after what Harry Kane has produced but I think Madison's up to the task and you know he had a he had a hard first appearance for Spurs but I think in his last friendly I think it was against Shakhtar he looked unplayable at times and if he can bring anything like that into the Premier League which we know he can he produces numbers year in year out for Leicester I think we've got a really exciting player on our hands yeah it's, I think it's going to be very interesting um, how he adapts without he hasn't played yet um, I think without Harry Kane in the team he's been having him in the uh, partnering with him in the preseason so he's going to have a new strike partner um, kind of well not a uh, partner up front but a new striker to aim for um, in this game and I think he's going to add that creative element that we've been missing apart from Harry Kane for many many years and I think he's going to become uh, my, one of our most central attacking players this season um, I re I've really loved uh, how he's played at Leicester and I really believe he's going to bring that to Spurs in a big way in the, in the Premier League and I think starting on Sunday all right, so big up to James Madison. A few debutants so far. We've got Madison, we've got Odogi and Vicario all making their first starts in the Premier League. Let's move on to the attack. At the right-hand side of the attack is going to go to Dejan Kulusevski. And this is a massive season for Dejan Kulusevski. After a bit of a poor season last year, not going to lie, he's, I think he scored on the first day of the Premier League last year against Southampton. Then only scored one goal after that until the end of the season. And he's, he needs to massively improve on that and I backing and I'm backing him to do that because he's a player which I really believe in his talents and um, look I really hope he just takes like a duck towards this Ad Postacoglu system yeah and I think he was getting better and better as preseason was getting on as well I think he was starting to get more confident and I'm really hoping that the way we like to manipulate the, the play so that our wingers get isolated could suit him with his physical approach on the wing and his ability in one-on-one -on -one situations. And we know that when he gets into the final third, he has that ability to, to pick out a pass or get, or get a shot off, which I don't think we saw enough of last season. It's going to be a difficult day um, on the on Sunday because Rico Henry's on that side. So when it's isolated with him, Rico Henry's no mark and it's going to be very difficult to take him on in one-on-one -on -one situations. But if, we, if Kulusevski can be confident and get the better of him that would be a very impressive impressive showing yeah absolutely and on the left hand side we're going to go to what I, who I think is going to be our brand new captain I think it's all going to be announced tomorrow but obviously it's going to be Hyung Min Son and another one who's got a really big season ahead after a poor showing last year look he did end up with 10 goals so how poor could he have been but I think that when you're judging him on previous seasons and previous experiences it was a poor showing from uh, Sonny by his high standards so I think um, we need to see a big season from Sonny this year I do question if uh, that role for him in the team is really um, plays into his strengths, but I still back him to do it. I agree. Um, I agree in the first part you said. I think that... You don't back him to do it? <laughs> I'm not saying I don't back him to do it. I think he can do a good job there, but him doing a good job on the wing doesn't necessarily necessarily mean you're getting the best out of him mm. and that's what I'm worried about do I see him getting more than 10 goals playing this role um, from what I've seen at the moment maybe he can adapt this role to be picking the ball up in, a, in more central areas and getting in more goal scoring positions and I hope that's true but right now what I'm seeing is him playing in wide areas taking taking on fullbacks and getting crosses in and trying to create chances and I'm not saying he's a bad chance creator but I'm just saying that's not what he's best at and what he's best at is scoring goals getting into the box scoring shooting from outside the box as well um, his finishing ability is second to none literally second to none and do you really want that ability stuck out wide that's what I'm worried about but maybe once we start to get more first of all maybe without Harry Kane and once we start to get you more use of the system he can find opportunities to start getting more goal scoring position, positions and that's what I'm hoping for and hoping that starts on Sunday 
All right, and to make up that final 11, coming out of the clouds of Harry Kane, it is Richarlison, our Brazilian number nine. And I keep saying this, but this is a massive season yeah. for Richarlison. Yeah, really big. Look, one Premier League goal last season. He will know that it's not good enough. I think you can see in his demeanour. He that, said it. I mean, obviously he said it, but you can see in his body language when he plays. Like, he, he's upset every time he misses a chance. I think he's getting to him. It's eating away at him. And hopefully now, Harry Kane's gone. Maybe the fact that he's the number one striker will give him that confidence to really resurrect his Tottenham career. I think that's uh, that will be very, very important. I do believe the way he plays can very much suit suit what Ange Postacoglu wants to do with the, with the striker. I think his pressing for the front is going to be invaluable. And I really hope that we create enough chances for him per game where he's going to have no choice but to uh, put some of them away. So uh, I think... Um, I really hope Rashad's in for a big season. I do believe he can score goals in this system. Um, where obviously, I don't believe it's going to be Harry Kane numbers, but if he can at least get between 10 and 15 goals, I think, this season, that'll be a good start. Yeah, so let's run through that starting eleven with you for Ange Postacoglu's first game in the Premier League. Vicario in goal, right back Emerson Royale, right centre back Kuti Romero, left centre back Ben Davis, left back Destiny Udogi, on the right hand side of the central midfield Pape Matasar, in the number six Eves Bissouma, on the left hand side of central midfield James Madison, on the right hand side of the attack Dejan Kulusevski, on the left hand side of the attack Kyung Min Son and then our number nine Richarlison so if this is the lineup which I do envisage it'll be very close to if not exactly spot on what is your sp uh, predicted lineup uh, scoreline I've gone for 2-2. Two, two. I think Brentford at home away is a very difficult game. I think they're very good at home and they're very tough to play against. And I actually think as well, the way they play is really suited to exploiting our weaknesses. That's what I'm worried about. But I really hope that the players come out with a point to prove, want to kind of send a message saying we can handle um, scoring goals without Harry Kane in this team and we can move forward with that. I'm not saying a 2-2 two -two necessarily represents a statement but at least it will be a solid start to the Premier League campaign. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really difficult game to be honest. We've uh, He hasn't been handed the easiest starts through his Premier League campaign to be honest and he's got a very difficult game in a game where we haven't beaten Brentford in, uh, in this stadium since they have been promoted and then we go off to Manchester United so I really want to get off to a flying start and a good start but I think it's going to be incredibly difficult with a Brentford team that are a settled team and uh, they know what to do uh, especially at home so I'm also going for 2-2 two -two. I think it's going to be a bit of a ding-dong battle but I, I just can't see us keeping them out at the other end uh, with Wissa and Mbwema who ended the season really well for Brentford last season but I do think we can hurt them the other way with uh, James Madison I think Richarlison's much more suited to this system than he was last season and then you've obviously got Son and Kulisevsky and, um, and a really strong midfield to uh, combat that as well so I think it'll be a really good game of football um, and to be honest, I think most games this season for Spurs is going to be a really uh, good good watch and it's going to be a fun season, um, but we might concede quite a few goals. But look, this is our predicted lineup. That is our predicted score lines. I want to know your score lines and predictions in the comments section below. We'll see you all tomorrow, which is Sunday, which is match day, two o'clock kickoff. Sim will be here in the studio with you with Barry for the watch long and I'm going to be gathering all the information from inside the Brentford Community Tournament on Sunday. We'll see you all there. Like, subscribe and comment and as always come on you spurs, spurs.